campaign naming. Why is it important to have really good campaign names? What structure should you be using for your campaign names? As well as the quickest way to rename your campaign. So there's actually two reasons why it's really important to have good, clean campaign names. So why is it really important to have good, consistent campaign names? The main reason is for ease of use and cutting down on wasted time. All of us, we have a limited amount of time that we can delegate to our managing our advertising. Some of us more than others, us as an agency, obviously delegate a whole heck of a lot of time towards managing ads. But brand owners, time is of the essence and anyone's time is valuable. So the more time you can have for other things, the better you're going to be able to grow your business. Or for us, if we have extra time, we're going to be able to manage a lot more in accounts. And so good, clean campaign naming structure allows us to quickly understand what were the intent of running that particular t- campaign so we can make good judgments based on that. And I actually have a really great story on that. So um, Amazon will periodically send out emails for recommendations that you should be taking on your account. And unfortunately, with a lot of those recommendations, all they give you is the campaign name and what they recommend doing with items inside the campaign. There's no really good reason of why they're doing this or what's even in the campaign at all. And so in this case, I was given some recommendations on, hey, we should start probably adding some negatives to this particular campaign and just because we have a really good clean campaign naming structure which is something that I'm actually going to go over our exact structure that we use in our agency to kind of give you an idea of um, how you might think about structuring your campaign names but because we have such a good clean naming system I know what is in the campaign I know what kind of match types are in the campaign I know the intent of us running that campaign I was able to say hey this is a single keyword exact match ranking campaign and if you know anything about exact match you know that adding negatives to an exact match campaign makes no dang sense so in this case what amazon was doing is they're just kind of pulling down on the back end they didn't know it was a ranking campaign they didn't know that we had some strategic reasons behind what we were doing all they did is say hey you should add this as a negative i didn't even have to go into that campaign i didn't even have to do any further research other than reading that email quickly and saying hey nope this is not a good optimization choice for this particular ad campaign and again it was because we had good clean naming structure especially when you get into doing like a lot of downloads you're coming through reports quickly understanding what the heck it is that you're looking at is invaluable and will save much more time than you actually realize all right so that's why super super important to get those things right so what kind of campaign naming structure should you be using I'm actually going to go over this quick presentation here. This is actually part of an internal training that we have all new people who join our agency here at Jungler to go through just so they can understand like how we're doing things, why we do things. I think understanding the why behind things is really important. And so this is our kind of like naming structure and how we've chosen to structure it. Some of these things are kind of swappable, especially the beginning part with the product identifier, but this is, you know, just kind of how we structure it. And you can see at the bottom here, it says goal is to provide quick and clear understanding of campaign strategy and goals. So that's our idea. That's what we're driving towards and having again, really clean, really concise in our campaign names. So the first part is a product identifier. So what is the product identifier? To me, it is a very quick, concise, you want to keep them concise as possible, way to kind of identify which product is contained within that campaign. Some people will use a SKU, some people will use an ASIN. That can be very valuable. Sometimes we'll use SKUs. This product identifier oftentimes will kind of modify it a bit depending on how each client kind of views your account. That's one thing we ask on onboarding is like, hey, do you have a naming system that you already use for your products? If so, by the way, um, any account managers or brand manager here, that's a really good pro tip. I always like to ask clients like, hey, how do you view your catalog? The easiest you can get a really clear understanding 
like if you can adopt language that the brand manager or account owner is already using, all of a sudden you start speaking the same language. And then if you could translate that to your campaign names, all of a sudden it makes everyone's life so much easier. But some people use SKU, some people use ASINs. Again, we kind of often like ask the brand manager or the account owner if there's a way that they view their account. Like for instance, if we have a whole bunch of water bottles, but like one has a straw and one has a lid with a snap top and maybe one are colored colorful you might see what it might be like a bottle with lid bottle with straw like those kind of things just a way for us to be like hey this is this one like if we're advertising only the blue ones we're going to put kind of that in the beginning of the campaign name to just say like hey this is our bottle with straw you know blue one and then we might have the asin in there as well basically the idea is that we don't always memorize use and we don't always memorize ASINs. I know sometimes you really you get to identify maybe like your top SKUs, your top ASINs, depending on the brand, you might have a more clear SKU naming structure that always makes life a lot easier if you are being intentional with naming your SKUs, but not everyone is, unfortunately. And so just having some very clear understanding of how it works, like what products are contained with it in kind of plain English, um, is the way that we found to be the best overall to kind of again understand what products are in this because the goal is to provide a quick and clear understanding of the campaign strategy and goals and one of the things is like hey what kind of products are we advertising in this campaign and the second part is the type i actually now that i think of it have a second slide here that we'll hop to here we go so the product identifier is what product are we advertise and the type is what ad type and what match type are we using so we use abbreviations sp sb D, SB, and we also use SBV for sponsor brands video. And then uh, what match types are we using? E, P, B, you know, B plus if you're using modified broad match. If you don't know what that is, it's actually most beneficial to be used in sponsored brand ads. But if you're using that, great. Um, you know, PT if we're doing product targeting, CT if we're doing category targeting. Um, you might have audiences in here for your sponsored display, like those kind of things. Basically, just like, hey, well, what kind of ad type is this? What match type? What's what are we doing? And then the second part is the strategy. So strategy is what is our intent behind these keywords? So maybe we're advertising it's a low bid campaign we would want to put something in here like hey these are low bid so we know the intent is to keep the bids low we might say hey this is a ranking campaign and then we know oh okay so um because it's ranking we know we're intent is to be more aggressive in this again we're understanding strategy here the keywords and then we're going to say hey where did we find these keywords because that's actually really important if we found these doing um research in our search term reports and we know that these are things that have converted before well then we want to put that in the campaign name because it, hey we have proven that these actually do convert for the products versus if we just find something in helium 10 somewhere yes we put our best foot forward and we do really good keyword research here at the agency that being said there's no guarantee that something's performed so if we know that it has performance we probably want to put where that keyword came from versus you know if we're just you know scraping all the asins off of page one for a particular keyword we should be putting that in there so where in the world did these keywords or in or targets come from bidding strategy this is going to be sponsored product only fixed bids down only uh, dynamic up and down this will change kind of how that our bidding reacts and so it's helpful to know that yes you can find that when digging into the campaign but it's more tedious so it's best to just put it in the title we also again for sponsor product I mean, optional you can add something here if you do um, bid if you're doing some placement percentage adjustments again it's just helpful to provide clarity um, date we like to put the launch date and then of course we put a tag like hey it was launched by us just so we know um, we're the ones launching it or it's like a legacy campaign um, I like to also again put the date launched because yes technically a lot of these you can go and find them but especially in things like the search term reports or again if you know Amazon saying hey these are the recommendations you might say hey I launched these yesterday maybe it doesn't make sense for me to do like over optimization on these because they've only been launched you know for a couple days or a week and so the last one is going to be just giving a quick naming example so here we can say again kind of like metal cup we have spe so i know this is a sponsored product exact match campaign ranking i know this is ranking h10 we found it in helium 10 FB fixed bids, we're doing a TOS is top of search. Then we know when we launched this. And then JR, we know that we were the ones who launched it. So you can see just by having this really clean, concise naming structure, I got 
all of that information just from reading this one campaign name. And you can see how that can cut down immensely on time spent going through the campaigns versus you have like campaign one, campaign two. You're like, great, what did I put in this? What what products are in this? I don't I don't remember. I don't know. And you're just going to left to be you know, digging around in that. So again, that's why it's super important. This is a neat campaign name structure that has morphed and changed, is now very solidified. I mean, we've gone through several iterations of our campaign naming structure and we've boiled it down to these are the most important pieces that we find we want to have really clean, clear visibility into when we're running hundreds and thousands of campaigns for clients across you know how many different accounts now so again these things anyone in the agency or any one of our clients can go into their account and say okay this is the strategy this is what we're doing again it cuts down a whole lot and provides so much clarity now your question might be great okay i know what kind of campaign name structure i want to have i'm kind of thinking about yeah there's some stuff that i I just haven't taken care of in my account. We all have, you know, kind of like the conglomeration of like the new stuff we've been testing and like our really old campaigns and maybe your naming structure isn't all that great. Well, I have really good news for you. So if you are not aware of something called bulk files, it is something I know and love. It is a really great resource when it comes to campaign management, but Amazon put out this year a bulk files 2.0, which there's a lot of people who kind of got stuck on the legacy format and not too many people have kind of branched out into the 2.0. But if you haven't yet, I highly recommend it because there is a new option in the updated Bulk Files 2.0, and that is renaming your campaigns. And this is the update. Honestly, it's one of the biggest. I am probably the most stoked about this. And the thing is, it's so easy. It's really, really easy. But if you don't know how to do it, it can be a little confusing. So what I want to do is walk you through renaming campaigns right now. Right. So if you are unaware of where to find a bulk file, what you're going to do is you're going to go into your account, you're going to click on here, sponsored ads, and you're going to navigate to bulk operations. Once you do, you're going to see this screen right here. Um, now what you're going to do is you're going to want to download a bulk file. So a bulk file is essentially your entire account inside of a spreadsheet. And as you can see, that would be really beneficial. So any campaign that you have named in your account will appear in here download it rename them as you will and i'm going to walk through exactly how you would go about renaming but first let's go over how you would actually generate and download the bulk file to be able to make these manipulations so you want to make sure that you have the new spreadsheet format checked by default typically this is checked but if it's not in your account this is what specifies like hey am i using the new formatting but if you have this one checked it's going to use the legacy format and this option is not available in the legacy it's only available in the new updated 2.0 version so when you have that selected you will want to create spreadsheet for download but you want to make sure before you do that you want to uncheck this campaign items with zero impressions if this item is checked what this means is that any items that do not have any impressions within whatever date ranges it is that you have selected, they will not appear in the bulk file. And so it's important to just make sure everything, because you might have campaigns with no impressions and you want those to appear. Now you can select specific date ranges. For us in this purpose, it doesn't matter the date range. We just need the campaign names. If you want to look at the performance of the campaigns, it would be helpful to look back at a specific date range just as you have have some performance because if we're only looking at yesterday there's not going to be that much data available i recommend like looking at say a 30 day the very least 14 day date range look back you can only go up to a 60 day look back window that's again if you're trying to evaluate performance for us it really doesn't matter um, and once you're done with that you will click create spreadsheet for download and you can see it is creating your spreadsheet it may take up to 15 minutes it really shouldn't take that long the more data you have in your account like the more campaigns that you have in your account the longer this is going to take i have seen accounts you know with thousands and thousands of campaigns can take quite a while for this thing to generate but if you don't have like it's overly large account you shouldn't really have an issue with this if you're not seeing this blue download option 
So if you don't see a download option here, just wait a hot minute and then you'll see the little blue download option. You click on that and then you will open up your spreadsheet. Now this is an example sheet. Um, some things have been changed in here because this is like an actual spreadsheet that was downloaded. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and just quickly show you how you can quickly rename campaigns. And like I said, this is actually very easy. There's only two steps for it. The first step you're going to have to do is find the campaign that you would like to rename. Um, how you're going to do this is there is this entity column. And honestly, if you're doing any work inside of bulk files or with a bulk file, the entity column is the most important and the first thing that you should understand. Remember how I said that a bulk file is basically your entire account inside of a spreadsheet? Well, the entity column tells you what is contained within this particular row. So how it works is think of the rows as kind of like levels. So you have your can, you know, like when you're in your account, you see the campaign, you click down to the ad group, you can look at a keyword and you know, you kind of move around. So all of these are different items within your campaign. So the entity row tells you what is items are contained within this row. So if we're going through and we're trying to rename the campaign, it would make sense that we'd be looking at the entity with the campaigns in it. So what you can actually do is you can filter for campaign here, click OK, and this is just going to filter for everything that has a campaign. Obviously, you saw what our campaign naming structure is. We don't name things campaign one and campaign two, but for this purpose, just say we had campaign one, campaign two in here, right? Um, so you are looking at campaign one, you're like, ah, okay, I really want to re rename campaign one because that makes no sense for me. So I'm just going to do something like campaign one test here, obviously rename campaigns in a way that allows you to get clarity that makes a lot of sense for you. I, again, I recommend following kind of like that structure that was in the outline, but you know, again, for this purposes, we're just going to say we named it campaign one dash test. All right. So that's the first step, right? So we found the campaign. Step one is we specify which what we want to name it, and this goes into the campaign name column, and then on that same row. So again, anything that is on this row is for this one item, right? So we're renaming this campaign, so it makes sense that we have to do whatever the second step is on this specific row. And the second step, again, is very, very simple. All we have to do in the operations column is put update. And that's it. That's all we got to do. Find the campaign name row that you would like to rename. Change the campaign name, whatever, whatever it is that you want to name your campaign in the campaign name column. And in the operations column, put update. We're done. Right? That's all that you have to do inside of the bulk file. There is one last step we have to do, and that would be to upload this because when you download a file, it's native to your computer. You can do as many changes. You can mess something up. You can do something crazy. It's not going to affect your campaigns whatsoever until we upload this file. So if we want to make these changes and make these things happen, we need to do an upload. So what you would do is you would click file and then you would download this. You would download it as an Excel file. It will download to your computer. And then what you would do is you would go back to this right here. And instead of doing create a download, we would click choose file here. You would select whatever that file is on your computer. Now, please note when I was in this file, this is a Google Sheet. So this automatically updates. If you're using Excel, you want to make sure that you save whatever changes it is that you've made to that before you upload. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything because, you know, in its essence, it's still the original file. Um, so again, all you're going to do is choose file and then you're going to be able to click upload spreadsheet. And I'm not actually going to do this because I want to make some changes to this account, which I don't actually want to happen. But when you are done, you can click upload file and you will see the upload happening down here. And then you will see when it is processed and that's it. Like I told you, very simple. The hardest thing that you're actually going to have to do in this process is finding the campaigns and deciding what you want to rename them. Other than that, the actual process of doing it easy peasy lemon squeezy. So hopefully that has been very helpful. If you have any questions on this process, of course, feel free to leave them down below.